I've had the pleasure of working with all of the people on this panel at one time or another, and I've seen firsthand the difference they are making for our industry, and it's big. So Claudia Morgillo is a regular guest on the summit. She has helped so many of our clients through her training and coaching programs. She is a coach for us here at Elite Body Shop Solutions and is also performing some great work for the Collision Career Institute as a coach for them. She's the founder of Double C Enterprises. Coach Claudia is with us today. Brandon Eckenrode, this guy since 2009 has been making a difference for the collision industry through his work at the Collision Repair Education Foundation. That's CREF, right? Uh, he's now CREF's executive director. I give you my friend, Brandon Eckenrode. Woo. And finally, Amber Ritter, love this gal. I've known this lady for quite a few years from the time she helped build the Collision Career Institute uh, then uh, going to work for us here at, at Elite, believe it or not. And now as Brandon's most valuable person ever at Craft, <laughs> one of the <laughs> industry's most <laughs> experts on career path and mentorship programs, Amber Ritter, everybody. So good Woo! to have you. Welcome everybody. The people panel is here. <laughs> I, I, love it. I love it. So guys, this little talent shortage thing we've been talking about for the past few years, is it is it getting better or is it getting worse? Right? What do you be what are you guys hearing out there? I want to go around the room starting with uh let's start with Brandon. Let's pick on him first. Sure. Get, Thanks again, Dave, for having me here. Um so I think the industry's need for entry level talent is still one of the top, if not the top issue in our industry, like we're facing like other technical trades. However, since this is the positivity summit on a more positive note, um, I think we've all seen more national media coverage about the traditional four year college route not being for everyone. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity, I think, for our industry to showcase what we have to offer for career opportunities and things like that um, so that we're seen as a first choice for students to consider. Nice. Amber, what do you think? What are you hearing out there? You know, I'm hearing that it's getting better, better for some. So, and the some that is getting better, better for are the ones kind of taking action and, and doing things about it. And mm -hmm. for, for those people, yes, it's getting better. Now for the ones that aren't, haven't started doing anything yet, no, it's probably not getting better for them. That's probably, their, part, their people are leaving and going to the places that are doing things right, right? What, and what we have actually also seen is an increase in the number of new schools starting up. So that kind of leads to an increase in the number of states really seeing the value of collision repair programs as well. So, you know, that's been a shift in the past couple of years. Yeah. Claudia, what are you hearing out there? Nice uh, to see you, by the way. Uh, hi. Hi, guys. Um, it's nice to see you guys. And I have to agree um, with Amber in the way that I think it's really about your perspective. It's what are you looking at? Are you looking at what you don't have or are you looking at what you have? Are you looking at what you can do or what you don't you can't do? It's a real, what are you looking forward or back? So if you're looking forward, you're looking at those opportunities and who you have. Are we building the people we have? Are we are we continuing to grow? Are we just looking at the gaps? Again, it's it's your perspective. It, it's yeah. really individualized, I think, at this point. It kind, of, it kind of goes back to what Dave Dunn once told me. He says, we don't have a shortage of talent. We have a shortage of great places to work. Mm. Yeah, Fair. that's, that's it's a good. It's a good perspective. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the projects that you guys are, have been working on? I see you all over the place. I get to, you know, I get to see you. and we're, you're working everywhere. You've got a little hero cape that you fly around from place to place <laughs> making a difference <laughs> in our industry, which I appreciate. What are you doing to help get those young people, attract them into our trade, into our industry? Sure. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so we've heard that students are being told to pick their career paths at a pretty early age. So to help combat that, um, CREF for the past three years has exhibited and presented at the National School Counselor Conference, which gathers thousands of counselors, kindergarten through high school. So CREF is there to represent the industry, um, to make sure that these counselors, who are usually the gatekeepers of talking with students about those career paths, to better understand our industry and what the earning potential is. Um, the CREF career fairs that we facilitate around the country obviously help connect students with industry employers, both locally and nationally. Um, another key thing is that we're actually working with our industry partners to improve the appearance of these high school and collision school programs. Mm -hmm. So things like sponsored uniforms, um, donated tools, equipment, supplies, making sure that these programs have current model vehicles 
to practice on. Um, it helps dispel that image of that dark, dingy body shop industry. Um, so by investing in these local programs, it helps um, showcase <laughs> that to those that are actually, you know, considering it. And then last but not least, you know, we're also creating <laughs> online um, student resources to help them with interviewing, resume writing, and what to look for in an employer when they're actually out, you know, re getting ready to, to enter into the industry. So what you're saying is I need to take my paint guns and donate them to a kindergarten class is what I'm hearing. So right. <laughs> that's it. Starting Amber. at the early age definitely works. Getting yeah. to them young. That's amazing. I mean, that's very forward thinking. Good on you guys. Wow. Yeah. Amber, you have a, a lot of uh, experience about building structured career paths. Now, a lot of the other trades that we compete with are a little better prepared than us as an industry. I think you would ag agree to. So what, what is the importance of a career path? Because a lot of shops, I say, hey, you need a career path. And they, uh, I need a what? What does that mean? Right. How do you and how does a shop go about making one? So um, I, I could go on all day, but I um, I'll point out, yeah. I'll point out two you know, primary things. One is the importance of career path and pointing out that a career path is not just something you put on a piece of paper, but it's actually kind of a program and a process. So it's not just as it's just as important for your current employees and your employees at different levels of the organization as it is for your entry level employees. Because if you're not developing and those, you know, higher level employees or those employees that are further along in the path or maybe have been with you for years, if they don't have somewhere to go and grow, your entry level employees won't have anywhere to go or grow either. Um, and so then the second thing is that for entry level talent, if they come to your door and they have maybe gone to two different employers and one employer tells them that they're going to help them grow and they're going to do all these things for them, but you can't really see that inside of the organization, they don't believe you. So if you have a actual career path and you show them, this is where I'm going to take you, this is the um, kind of process that we're going to go through. And then you have people that you can point them to who've gone through that process. So you're backing that up with kind of story and real life examples. They're going to choose you as an employer. Um, and so really, as, as shops kind of try to start doing that themselves, there's five things that you can do to start with. Number one is set the foundation. So that is really making sure that you're taking a look at your job descriptions, you're taking a look at your culture and your people. Do you have the right foundation to do a career path? If you don't, you start there. The second thing is creating that roadmap. So within that roadmap, it's really making sure that you kind of look at what the prerequisites are for each job. It's looking at you making sure that you kind of understand what your training plan is, both for your knowledge based training as well as your hands on training. And then you have all of your people set up in order to execute. And then the third thing is, you know, really establishing what that actual training is and, and mapping it back to your roadmap. And Finally, documenting and evaluating and making sure that all of your plans are also in your budget, because if you don't have the training in your budget, it's probably not going to happen. Um, so kind of the quick and dirty on that. <laughs> Love it. So smart. So smart. Yeah. Brandon, you're so lucky. <laughs> yeah, lucky. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, all right. I want to talk to Claudio for a second. Um our industry talks a lot about attracting talent and those kind of things, but what can we do about retention? What can we do that once we have some talent, what about keeping talent? Cause it feels like a lot of people have gone historically, I'm going to go and poach staff from other, from other facilities. How do you become that employer of choice, if you will? That's a great question. And I would say that the more important focus in that realm is, is it's really of how we start those relationships. Mm -hmm. So, so the retention is all going to go back to what did we set up? Right. So so did we take the time to really get to know those people that we we chose to start working alongside? Do we know what they want from their career at all? Do we do we know what their motivators are? Did we take the time to, to ask or did we do what stereotypically happens in our, you know, we tell them what they should strive for? Right. So do we actually know? So I think that's really I feel that when we start all relationships with our, our employees, even the existing ones, we're building it on quicksand. I like to wow. use the analogy that we're building it on quicksand. There's no solid foundation there because it's it's really wishy washy. It could change at any minute. We don't know. Right. It, it was holding and now it's not. And that's where that retention is engagement, disengagement. So so I, I liken it to any relationship that wherever we start, you're setting the tone for it. Right. If you, you want to use a comparison of any re dating relationship, you're pretty much going to want to know what that other individual is going to want 
Otherwise, we're going for the same, you know, a different thing here. Do you want a long-term relationship? Do you want to just date? I mean, because we're setting ourselves up for like something totally different. And I think that that's similar to some of our employees, especially our Zeds and our millennials. Are you looking for a career or are you looking for like a job? Right. right. So I think if we start to look at it in that way where we're setting up relationships. I like that analogy, right? It's it's like, it, yeah, do you just want to go out on a date and have some fun or do you really want to get serious here? <laughs> And will we even get a second date considering how we started? <laughs> so this is what you should want from this relationship. Mm, maybe not. Oh man. <laughs> well, let's let's have a let's have an open discussion ab about getting involved in local schools, whether it's high schools, trade schools, or or whatever. And I'll let you guys just kind of, you know feed off of each other on this thing. But I, I'm the last time, you know, when I was working in a shop, I was like the only independent operator that would ever go to the school during like trade fairs. And then there would be the consolidators, the big guys who would have the, the booths next to me, but never any independents. Hmm. What the heck's going on? How can we get our independence involved? Who wants to go first? I can go first. Uh, so real quick, Kref, um, to help get, you know, both the industry and the schools connected, um, Kref has created a um, online school directory. And I just dropped the link to that directory in the chat section. So anyone from the industry can use that to locate what schools are in their local market. Maybe they're already involved with some, maybe they're not familiar with the ones that are down the street, but that resource is there for the industry to use. And I can't stress enough the importance of the industry Kind of like what you're saying, Dave, but you have to get involved. So go in and talk with the instructor, talk with the students, find out what support they need as each school is going to be in a different spot. So is it maybe advisory board participation, the donated tools and equipment, scrap parts. Um, but what's also important that I don't think this industry does enough of is make sure that they get FaceTime with the school administration, because it's the school administrators that are the ones determining whether or not they keep these programs open or not. Oh. But when they can hear from local employers that resonates with that group so they can share that we could you could be graduating 10 times the amount of students and it still wouldn't fulfill the market need in this industry or in that market so making sure that they're present and engaged um, not only helps make sure that they have that relationship with the instructor but it helps that networking that they can have with the students when they are getting ready to graduate and go into the workforce wow yeah what else ladies I think, too, it's about kind of deciding what your time, talents, and treasures are. What do you have to give to the schools? What do you? How much time do you have? Um, do you have training opportunities to be able to give to them? Do you have enough time to be on an advisory committee? Kind of what are your time, talent, and treasures? And then making sure you have an action plan and that you tell somebody about it. Because once you tell someone you're going to do something, <laughs> hopefully that means you're actually going to start getting involved with the school. And now you've got an action plan that backs it up and you kind of know what your available resources are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do what I always do, guys. I'm going to take us in, a, in a, an, an alternate direction. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's go. Squirrel you, chase. You, I'm in. Ready, Sorry. Um, so, but uh, you guys kind of mentioned it earlier, which is what are our other options as well? Not that the, that the options we have are not working, but in my area, neck of the woods, we're all competing for the same 15 kids. The same 15, 20, like it's just not enough individuals. So for me, I'm focusing on what can I do as the employer? So how can you get the employers involved? How can we build our own? And that was to the touching the point on the CCI programs, you know, Collision Career Institutes. How can I keep them in my shop being productive with the ideal mentor and a structured program and giving them the support that they need and the touch points that they need. So there is alternatives is what I'm saying is that maybe not, that's not, that's one of the directions that we could potentially go that it maybe whatever works for you. And I would say that that's, that's an option too is think differently in, in this, in, in, in this regard, you know, we need more. How, what are you willing to put into it? Why not you build someone? So Claudia started us on this squirrel chase, and I'm going to keep going down this path. <laughs> um, we've had a 300x, 300 times increase in mechanic shops reaching out, inquiring about getting into the collision space. Why? Because they're kind of freaking out about EV vehicles or like my oil, lube, filter, transmission service, all those things, right? We've got this mass amount of, call it 90,000 mechanic shops out there that are kind of like, you know, wow, what's going to happen for my future? There's uncertainty there. Is there an opportunity for us to go and draw mechanics into our space? Or is there other pools that you guys have identified that would be, 
you know, something that we as, as employers could, could try and attract people from. What have you seen out there? So Brian, that's resonated with what we've heard when it comes to, you know, at our career fair events, we've had employers say that, you know, I don't care if it's mechanical students, collision students, welding students, there's, there's such a dire need that they can train those entry level students to the way they need to. But I think at those events and others, you know, it's, it's better to see a bigger pool of students because there might not be as many collision students around like there are mechanical programs. So I don't think we can, you know, no rock should be unturned in terms of finding potential staff. And as long as they've got a good work ethic, attitude, showing up on time, staying off their cell phone, um, I think that's that's great to be able to have a bigger pool for us to be able to engage with and then hopefully get into the to the industry. I love yeah, it. I see in the um, comments here, Best Buy employees from Trenton. I mean, what a what a great idea. We're we're now we're dealing with vehicles that are basically computers on wheels. So this is cool. What do you think, Amber? Years ago, I um, was looking at a resume database program um, for schools and what I noted, and, you know, I thought, okay, well, I can see the correlation between construction and, you know, collision or some of those other trades where there's a direct link. But what mm -hmm. we found and what we saw is there was a number of people that were interested in cosmetology that were also yeah. interested in collision. And that was kind of an outlier for me. It's like one of those, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and it was kind of that artistic, you know, you know, look yeah. and feel. And so, you know, thinking outside of the box and thinking kind of not even maybe cosmetology students specifically, but like that type of personality type and interest level and how do you kind of tap into those type of people as well. That's amazing. So what you're saying is we're all going to become better looking eventually here. Uh -oh. <laughs> right. No. There's I, help is on the way. So. I would agree. I would have said no one, no one is exempt from this. I mean, my background is technical theater. Like I literally have a degree in that. So it, mm. it's about, it's about finding those individuals that like to be creative, that like to be problem solvers, that want to work with their hands. And, and, and that's really, it's about finding the opportunities in those individuals and, and having a, a very stable and clear way that they can learn this new thing if they have interest, because interest is emotion. So as soon as you've got that um, an initial little trigger, we need to ideally jump on that. Okay, so here's how that can happen. Because we can disengage really, really quickly on, on an interest. It's like, oh, yeah, I thought I was going to take up skiing, but then uh, it looked too hard. Right? So, I mean, <laughs> it's really about finding the opportunities there to just, you know, hook them in, kind of like fill them in with a very clear uh, structured path with support, lots of structured support and touch points, especially with the younger generation. I cannot emphasize that enough. Enough. They want to be spoken to a lot. And um, again, if you feel that that's a positive or a negative, it just, it's, it is, it's just the reality. And, and so how do we do that? Right. Yeah. Putting structure in place for them, building their scaffolding so that we can then take it down for them. Sounds good. Okay. Starting with Amber, one minute or less each. If a shop is feeling stuck and unable to find the employees they need, what is a logical first step in your opinion? Where My opinion. Start? What? With inside your own organization with your people. Ask your people why do they like working for you and use that to help recruit others. If they don't like the answer that you get when you ask that question, you probably need to start there. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Claudia. Uh, uh, yeah, hold up the mirror. I really think it's about being super, super clear about what you're looking for, right? Are we just are we just getting the net and 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 whatever comes, or are we looking for something really specific? Do we want to bring this individual in because it's going to make our organization better, or it's just going to put a bu butt in a seat, metaphorically speaking? So really yeah. focus on what you want because if we don't know, then we don't know when we see it. I love that, Brandon. So um, sound like a broken record, but connect with CREF to make sure that we can get you connected with the local schools. Um, when we've asked collision school instructors, how do you help find uh, jobs for students? Only 11% say they use hiring sites like Monster or other sites. It's 89% say that they use advisory committees, local job fairs, school job placement um, departments, and the personal relationships with local businesses. So we want shops to be part of that 89%. Um, and then last but not least, um, as CREF is able to help support the schools because of our incredible industry partners, um, I'll drop my email in the chat box too, um, but we'd love to get engaged and help work together with industry members and get them involved and invested in their local schools. And thank you again, Dave and Ryan for, for having us. You bet. In the, in the last minute that we have here, I want to make sure that you guys are aware there is a video that is now being circulated 
made uh, it's made available to, that any of you uh, employers can use as a public service announcement to discuss the benefits for people to enter into the collision repair trade. I want to thank uh, Petra Schroeder and also Charlie Robinson from uh, Collision Career Institute. They've created this video and made it available. And our team is going to put that in the chat for you guys to go check this video out. And they said you can reach out to them and you can make that video your own to help you uh, create awareness about what an amazing industry that we're all in. Brandon, Amber, Claudia, a big round of applause. We love you guys. Keep up Thanks, the great work guys. at CREP. Thank you for all you do.